This is Pete Brown, and I'm here at Mad Expo 2011, and I'm here with Team 2363 with the Triple Helix robot. How are you all doing? Good. Good. All right, I have to see this thing run. Can you show me it running? Yeah, go ahead. Excellent. And so the two of you are working together on this, right? Uh, yeah, at competition we're allowed to have two drivers uh, at the same time operating and then a field coach behind us. And so our normal operation on here today is our field coach stepping in, uh, Rachel. That's a, it's on the edge. It's, it's, oh, it's, on the edge. it's there, barely. <laughs> okay. And so you're controlling direction with a joystick? The joystick has three different angles of uh, degree. And so there's the average X and Y. So you can go sideways and forward nice. and backwards. But you can also rotate the controller. And so that allows you to give the robot an X spin. Nice. So that has special wheels on it that make that happen, right? Uh, they're called mechanical wheels. And so the angles on them allow you to drive the wheels in different directions, and it applies sideways torque. And so that lets the robot, uh, robot go in uh, along the x-axis instead right. of just being able to go forward and backwards. So it's really nice for maneuverability. And Rachel, what are you controlling over here? Um, this controls the elevator system that we use to get to the higher levels, and also it controls the pickup of the tubes and the dropping of them. Okay. So what's the, what's the purpose of this robot? Like, what, what is it used for? Well, we're in an organization called FIRST, uh, which is for the inspiration and recognition of science and technology. And so uh, every year they give us a game in early January. And it, uh, so then we have six weeks to build a robot in order to play that game. Okay. And you're high school students? Yep. Right? Um, okay. We are from Minchville High School in Newport News. And... Um, this year's game was the 20th anniversary of our organization, so what the purpose of it was to hang the tubes of the logo in the correct order on the different racks. Okay, and the logo itself, so this is the logo of the first competition right here? Yes. All right, very cool. And now this goes up, what, about 10, 11 feet in the air or something like that? Yes. Right? And then the robot itself has an elevator, which we're, we're not going to demonstrate today, but this, this raises up, right, all the way up to be able to put those. So why not just design it so that you have a 10-foot pole on the top? Like, Well, in order, during the competition, uh, you, we have human players that are allowed to throw out the tubes. So the mm -hmm. tubes aren't all on the field at the beginning. Uh, they're actually in player stations. So the human player throws out the tubes or they feed it through a slot. And so we knew that it would be easiest if our player would just th throw the tubes down to our side of the field. Okay. So we designed our robot to be able to go to the ground and pick up any tubes down there and then be able to put it in any of the heights that we needed it. Okay. And are there constraints in designing the robots? I mean, can you, can you build a tank and put it out there on the field? <laughs> there are constraints. Um, 120 pounds for the robot without battery and bumpers on it. Um, there's also a height constraint in the beginning. Um, but then once the game began, there was no height constraint this year, but you had to be within an 80-inch um, cylinder. Okay. Your um, robot couldn't extend past that. Okay. So you have weight uh, restrictions. You have um, uh, at least some volume restrictions, it sounds like, uh, the 80-inch cylinder. Um, what about uh, you know, actually building this? This looks like a, a pretty expensive piece of kit here. Um, we actually get a kit of parts from the organization each year. Um, and then we are allowed to use $3,500 of our own team money um, to put towards the robot. So a lot of the electronics we use are um, from the kit of parts, but a lot of the building materials we buy on our own. Okay. 3500 bucks. that's pretty amazing. That's some serious bake sale or something going on. So like, <laughs> Yeah, we're really lucky because we, uh, we have a lot of sponsorships. And so we're fortunate to be in an area with a lot of technology. Yeah. So there's a lot of companies that are willing to give us some sponsorship money. And yeah. so we're extremely fortunate on that side. Cool. So the team is bigger than the two of you, right? So can you yes. tell me a little bit about you know, how that's made up? And I understand you have like mentors and, and stuff like that. Yes, um, we have about 22 students on our team right now and then 11 mentors. Um, Professors, engineers, uh, regular teachers at our uh, high school, 
Um, and then we break into sub teams. So we have the electronics sub team, the multimedia, which takes pictures and does video. Uh, we have mechanical sub team, and we have um, programming sub team. We're also trying to build um, onto our business end of things because there's so many more co awards and competitions that we can do within the first. Um, such as 3D animations and um, business plan design and things like that, which we aren't really supporting right now because people don't know about it. So we're really trying to trying to get that out there in our school um, system that we need people like that too. It's not all about the robot. Right, right. So you have people that are designing artwork and T-shirts and stuff. I, I believe that was part of what you said, right? Right. And then you have people doing video and, and are they doing like posters or like, you know, uh, publishing information about what you've done and, and stuff like that? Not so much. Um, we do do videos about the season and about um, off-season competitions and things like that, and we try and get them on the morning announcements kind of as promo videos. Yeah. Um, so we're still kind of trying to grow that team a little bit, too, as well. Cool. And about how many did you say the team was? 22. 22. Wow. All right. So that's a pretty good sized team. What I really like about that, though, is it sounds like you've covered a bunch of different disciplines. It's not just about building a robot, but right. there's a whole ecosystem you're building around that inside your school. Um, tell me a bit about uh, the mentors that you have. So um, to give you an example, you know, uh, the, you know, the kids that go and do a science fair in like fifth grade or something like that, you can always tell the, the one where dad actually built everything that was on the science fair. So I understand you have mentors, but still you all designed the robots and everything here. Can you tell me right. how that works? Uh, our team is really, we're centered around a lot more of the student participation than our mentors. Uh, so our mentors are there to help guide us in the right direction, but they aren't there to tell us this is what you need to do and just go do it and then everything will be good if you just do that. They're there to help us come up with ideas and brainstorm with us and then uh, we actually can come up with ideas for the brackets and stuff uh, yeah. within ourselves and make sure that they all work so we run them by the mentors. But it's uh, we pride ourselves on being a student-run team. Okay. I mean, I see Matt's over here. So, Matt, you are one of the mentors, or what's, what's your role in this? I'm one of the mentors and the head coach of the team. Great. So can you tell me a little bit about how that works and, and like, what you've seen from the team? Uh, yeah, the, the you know the first organization is really good about um, giving the students uh, something to, to build on. Um, really, from the outside in, looking in, uh, the first organization is about robots and competitions. Once you've worked with FIRST for a very short period of time, you realize that it's really about building people mm -hmm. and not so much about building the robots. The robot's the vehicle to, to, to build the people. And uh, so a lot of the students really kind of find themselves uh, when they get involved in FIRST. And uh, many go into science and technical type fields, right. and, but many don't. And mm -hmm. because, but they, they get the experience of uh, being on a team and, and working together and things like that. So the mentors come together and help facilitate that, uh, help to guide the students, and uh, you know, mainly keep them from going down paths that are you know dead ends in right, terms right. of designing the robot because we only got six weeks to design and build the robot wow yeah uh, you can you can easily get yourself into a dead end where uh, you're you're just not going to recover from that right. in time to compete so 22 people all building a robot what's it like when you're actually out there uh, trying to you know win this competition like are there you know lots of teams is it like uh, you know like karate kid way back yeah, the, yeah. the guys in the middle everybody's cheering them on the other side's cheering like uh, well yeah it's actually the events are extremely bit large but a lot of the fan base is made out of other teams and the families of the teams but uh, there are in fact people from the community that come out to watch some of the events uh, themselves that's that's really cool to see yeah. Uh, but when you, I mean, when we compete, we're competing in actual uh, stadiums. So our Virginia competition is in Richmond at the Siegel Center uh, at VCU, and so like it, we actually play on the basketball for, uh, court, and so the stadium is just, I mean, on the yeah, on competition days, it's just packed full of uh, fans. It's, I mean, it's a real thrill to be out there competing. So yeah, we love it. So uh, so it sounds like a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Right? Has it made school interesting? Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> Time would go so slowly in high school without this because with first, you don't have to sit in a classroom and go, uh huh, and read from the textbook. You're actually doing something. Like, right. 
you're learning and you're learning so much more I feel with a hands-on thing than you are sitting in the classroom and a lot of the part um, the issues that kids have with school is they're taking classes they don't want to take but when they find something they're really interested in they put all their effort into it there's kids that say oh I'm not smart enough to join the robotics team but they're re they don't realize how good they are at math Right. or at science and technology. They don't understand that until they join the team and they really get into it. And then it's kind of, you can prove to them that in college you're going to be able to do this stuff because it's going to interest you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in high school it's kind of slow to get through because you're taking history classes you don't want to take or there's English classes you don't want to take. But then you start getting into the technology and you can, you can really understand something and, and learn it. And you don't just forget it because you're applying it so often. So it's really a great experience to be able to be on a team like this. Great. Well, Devin and Rachel and Matt, thank you so much for uh, for this quick interview here. And that is an awesome robot. I have been thank super you. impressed with that during this whole event. <laughs> Thanks. Awesome.